Bob, your longtime partner, Paul Massey, you know, just essentially, against all odds, came in and beat de Blasio, Mayor de Blasio, in the first sort of fundraising reckoning. And everyone had said, this is the true test for Massey. Can he raise the money to show that he's a serious candidate? And he actually came out on top. So just a little bit about that. Um, you know, I've been partners with him for 32 years. Um, and the qualities that he has make him an ideal candidate for mayor. He has honesty, integrity, compassion, uh, flexibility, and that flexibility comes in very handy when you have folks who have opposing objectives and you try to listen to what they have to say and figure out how you can bring them together. And those are the qualities that made him a great broker. Uh, those are also the qualities that made him a great manager of our business. Uh, and those are the qualities that will make him a great mayor. It was towards the end of that filing period that he received the endorsement of the Independence Party, which is critical. If you're running on the Republican line uh, without the support of the Independence Party, it's very, very difficult to see a path to victory. Uh, I think it virtually eliminates a path for any other Republican who might consider running. Um, and the, the amount of contributions that we received subsequent to that endorsement went up significantly. And the, the contributions have been spread out amongst Democrats, independents, Republicans. I, I think the, uh, the marketplace is going to be very, very surprised at the amount of capital that we're able to raise for this campaign. So being a cheerleader for Massey is only your after hours job. Let's talk a little bit about your day job. Okay. What's going on in the market right now? There has been some uncertainty with the election and the uncertainty about some of the things he said. People are concerned that sort of massive infrastructure spending may trigger a rise in interest rates that people weren't quite expecting just yet. But what other sort of factors are you seeing in the market right now that people should know about? Well, I think if you look at the market generally, the market is trending downward, uh, not significantly, but uh, the dollar volume of sales last year was off 25%, number of properties sold down 16. Well, that was a record year, right? That, that was a record year, absolutely. So, and that's important, a, a very important point, is that if you look at the numbers absolutely, they look good. If you look at the numbers relatively, they don't look so good. But that's because 14 and 15 were record years. We had more buildings sell in 2014 than ever before. 5,534 buildings sold. That was an all-time record by more than 10%. And of course, the 71 billion of sales that occurred in 26, 2015 um, were just two unbelievable years. Um, but we had volume of sales fall, values went up. Uh, they were up about 9% citywide. Um, and fundamentals are kind of con a concern for us in terms of rent levels in residential, retail, office. Uh, but we'll see. I think if, if 2016 values can hold where they are right now, uh, I think we would consider that a win for the marketplace. And uh, we'll see what happens. And uh, let's talk a little bit about you. We had reported that you have renegotiated your contract at Cushman. And as of next year, you're a free agent. You might stay, you might leave. but. What are you thinking at this point? What can you tell us? I guess you may not have made up your mind yet either, but. Uh, look, I'm, I'm very, very, very happy at Cushman and Wakefield. Uh, the acquisition of Adam Spees and Doug Harmon uh, has been a great thing for the company, a great thing for me. Those guys are awesome, and I love working with them. So right now, I'm just focused on selling as many buildings as I can, and uh, I'm truly enjoying my, my time at Cushman.